Most Southern gospel music lovers back in the 60s got up a little early on Sunday morning and put the coffee pot on, got the kids dressed while watching a television program called The Gospel Singing Jubilee. And names like Les, Sam, Little Roy, and Vestal, Dale Shellnut became very personal friends. And we were anxious to see if Rusty Goodman or Dottie Rambo had written a new song. And it was always exciting to see Happy Howard nearly beat the devil out of that old piano. And you could hear them sing, Jubilee, Jubilee, you're invited to the Happy Jubilee with the regular guests, the Florida Boys, the Dixie Echoes, the Happy Goodmans, the Inspirations, and Steve Sanders. And we would all watch and see who would come up over that hill as our special guests. The Spears, the Downings, the Oak Ridge Boys, the Stamps Quartet, the Blackwood Brothers, the Rambos, the Statesman Quartet, and many others. Well, sit back and relax because we have found those tapes and have put together what we think are the best of many groups who appeared on the Jubilee. And now, here are our hosts on the Gospel Singing Jubilee, the Florida Boys. Saints of all the angels in their glory will be there. Jubilee, 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 Jubilee. You're invited to this happy Jubilee. Jesus Christ was born. The Lord sent down a band of holy angels that bright and glorious. Go and tell it on the mountain, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now when I was a seeker, I sought both night and day. I asked the Lord if he would help me, you know he showed me the way. Go and tell it on the mountain, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is Go and tell it on the mountain. Christ is go and tell it on the go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. And that was the Florida Boys, and this is Les Beasley, the manager and lead singer of the Florida Boys. And uh, the Florida Boys uh, were the host, and you were the producer, what, for 17? Somewhere around that, Bill. I, I haven't figured it up exactly, but 16, 17, maybe 18 years, we had a lot of fun. The great thing for me was to watch these tapes when you were a young, inexperienced Les Beasley to a more mature, worldly wise Les Beasley. <laughs> You have a nice way of saying it, Bill, and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to have you here today, Les. And um, I know for our family, it was a ritual on, on, the, uh, on the morning uh, to get up. Gloria would always put the coffee, uh, coffee pot on, get the kids ready, and we'd sit around and watch the uh, Gospel Singing Jubilee. 
Well, I'm so glad you chose to do that. Are you sure that Gloria watched, or was it just you? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I got Gloria into it. Uh, uh, very no, I she got into it later, but it was kind of a new experience for her. You know what? It, the Southern Gospel was, uh, was, a little, uh, was a little tough for her from the beginning. She just couldn't figure out, why do four guys enjoy getting around a microphone and going, oh, <laughs> and getting it into it? I said, honey, it's, there's a special opinion about that. But she did kind of lock into Vestal. She always kind of liked yeah. Vestal. Loved her sincerity. Well, a lot of people do. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, she's got to know Vestal in the, in the later years now, and uh, that's been a good experience. Speaking of Vestal, the Goodmans were probably the very, very best in what we call Southern Singing Convention songs. That's where the verses are pretty structured. Well, the chorus is, too, in a different kind of a way. But when you got to the chorus... Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's kind of like... Um, I don't know if I, I should say this or not, but I know that one time when... The Goodman family was on the radio. A guy called in and said it sounded like they were killing snakes or thrashing peas. <laughs> but it all seems to come together at the end. <laughs> they finally end up okay, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Well, this Always. Is, <laughs> well, this is one of the best songs of the Goodmans. This was um, a song written by O.A. Paris. It's a good one, too. A good man, a good writer from Alabama. And I heard from his granddaughter the other day after we had done the singing convention video say, uh, telling me, thank you for including my... Uh, my grandfather on that tape, and hear oh, the Goodman great. singing when morning sweeps the sky. Let's listen. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, those folks knew how to build a fire, didn't they? They really do. You said they can sing that song uh, as well, or, or if not better than anybody, that particular type. You know, the energy that they would just create in a room when they would come in. My Lance. Oh, man. And it, and it seemed like you, you folks were having a whole lot of fun. Well, uh, we did it, have a lot of fun. Dinner play uh, going that's, on. That's uh, something that, that may be hard for people to believe, but we just had a lot of fun. Of course. You know, one of the groups that... Um, was with you from the very beginning was the Dixie Echoes. And, That's and, right. and, and the one we're going to listen to now, there were a lot of different personnel changes, as there always is in a group. But Ken Turner was on the bass. Ken Turner on the bass, Joe Whitfield on the baritone, uh, Dale Shellnut on the lead, and the lead. Uh, Larry Ford was the first tenor. Larry Ford now has become very popular in these uh, homecoming videos, singing oh, yeah. little as much when God is in it. He's been singing great all of his life, ever since he was a young boy. I, I first started hearing him sing when he was about 16, 17 years old, and he was fantastic. Still is. Well, their group sounded uh, real great with this particular personnel, and they're going to do a tune that features Dale, and Sam sets this song up. Sam sets it up. He yeah, sets it you're up. right. <laughs> and Sam can set them up, believe me. <laughs> Take it over, Sam. Do it. <laughs> 
Here are the Dixie Echoes to sing for us now. And I hope I get the title of this song right, because Dale would never forgive me. It's come on in to the prayer room. Is that it, Dale? That's close enough. Is that close enough? You sing, will you? I remember when I was a child Sitting on my mammy's knee Shouted hallelujah Glory to God to set her poor soul free I'm a witness that he'll come in your room He's gonna come in your room Wash me clean, happy as I can be. I'm a witness that he'll come in your room. He's gonna come in your room. You take Jesus for your doctor. He'll write your prescription. He gave me all you ever could be in the room, in the prayer room. Said, listen, let me tell you what the good Lord done for me. Sin. Wash me clean, happy as I can be. I'm a witness and a room. In your room, he's gonna come in your room. You take Jesus for your doctor. He'll write your prescription, Lord. He gave me all you ever could need in the Why didn't you go ahead and sing that, Dale, instead of just hey, messing? Listen, yeah. let me tell you <laughs> what the Lord done for me. Took away my sin, washed me clean, happy as I can be. I'm a witness that he come in your room. He gonna come in your room. You take <laughs> you just thought you were producing that show, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody could control Dale Sheldon. <laughs> you know, there's no feeling like when you think you're in control oh. and the whole thing gets away from you. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. At that uh, the, the taping of the... Um, what you call them? The homecoming. No, no, yeah, the homecoming. It gets, it gets and, and, and in all fairness, that's when the thing becomes fun. It looked like that was beginning to happen there. So yeah, well, that type thing is fun when it's over, but at the time, as you know, it's you not, not too funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, D they were having a good time there. Dale Shelnat really seemed like a wonderful human being. He really was. He was about half crazy, but he no, <laughs> he was a fun guy. He, he was the life of the party type. And really, he was the singer around uh, whom they built that entire oh, group. Oh, he could sing as no other. <laughs> and the sad part about Dale, he, at, what, at the age of, of 45? 47, I think. Yeah. He, he died of a massive heart attack, mm. plowing a mule in his garden. Mm. He was a, he liked the uh, farm. Like to be outside? Oh, yeah, he, liked, he was an outside mm. man, and that's, uh, that's what he was doing when he had his heart attack. Well, Dale had a lot of friends. A lot of people have asked, you know, what, is, what had happened to Dale. But, um, uh, but uh, just to hear him sing again and, and sing with that energy is oh, a joy. A great loss. The great thing about the Jubilee, you probably had everybody who ever sang a gospel song or whoever wanted to sing a gospel song on that program one time or other. We tried. We tried <laughs> to get uh, what was happening at the time, you know, people who were singing and singing well, uh, we tried to have them on the program. Uh, we, I'm sure we missed some, but we had a lot of them. You know, Jake Hess, um, of course, is so popular on the reunion videos and people, people just love his spirit. When people ask me about Jake Hess, I say, well, the best word to describe Jake is he's a spirit. He's a, he's bigger than his talent. He's he's bigger than his voice. He's, he's he's a special spirit and great singer. And a great great singer. We've got a clip of Jake. Now this is after he left the Statesman, right? Yeah. And yeah, and, this is going to be after he left the Statesman. And might maybe even after he, he even left the Imperials. Oh, it is. Yes, he was. 
singing solo at and the and time. And he was doing some solo work. You have a wonderful interview with him. Let's listen. We feel real fortunate in having for our guest today, Mr. Jake Hess. And uh, we are glad that you came by, Jake. The other, the other day, uh, we had the pleasure of being on Jake's television show in Nashville, Tennessee. And, and I begged and begged and begged, and so you finally uh, consented to let me be on your show. It's not quite that way, Jake. Not quite. Not it quite. was just about that way. <laughs> well, anyway, we're glad to have you, and I believe that you're going to sing uh, uh, one of my favorite songs. This is definitely one of my favorite songs, Les, uh, of all the gospel songs I've ever sung in my life. This is my favorite. Okay, I'll go over here and we'll kind of ooh a little bit behind you, all the Florida boys, okay? Glad to have you. Good. Glad to have you. And this it, is, uh, excuse me, sir. I was going to tell them what it was. Well, I was it is no secret what, what God can do. That's true. What he's done for others, he'll do for you, he'll do for you, with arms wide open, he'll pardon Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have longed for an extreme, your courage to renew. What he's done for others, he'll do for you, he'll do for you, with arms wide open, he'll pardon you, it is no to see Jake uh, at that age and see that would have been what 20 years ago I think you're right yeah uh, at least that long mm -hmm. maybe longer you could always say <laughs> still can yeah. let's tell me about the inspirations I don't know a whole lot about those boys well first time uh, I saw the inspirations they hired uh, the Florida boys to come up and sing for them at that time piano player and manager Martin Cook was a school teacher in Bryson City and they were just some students of his. The, the bass singer was 15 years old and I think uh, the next oldest one might have been 17. Mm. And it's, it's an incredible story. They've come a, they've gone a long way with the mm. talent that they have. They're, they're mountain boys and there's a mountain flavor to their singing, mm. but it's good. Gloria and I were up in the Gatlinburg uh, last summer, and we, we took a car and went up over the mountains on the other side down to North Carolina, and I didn't know, I'd heard, heard of the name of the town, what, Bryson City? Bryson City, yeah. When we came to the city limits, there were signs about the, uh, the, the inspirations because they were advertising their, their annual singing there or something. We have a place called Inspiration Park, which is just outside uh, 
Bryson City out uh, toward Whittier, I believe is the, the name of the town. It's up on the a mountainside, and well, we've been to everyone they've had. They always hire us, and we have a great time singing on the side of the mountain. They call it a singing in the mountains. They had a clean cut look about them. Oh, good, good people. And they came Salt along. Of the earth. They came along in the '60s, where where uh, I think some people wanted to see some just good, fresh, freshly scrubbed young boys, right? Oh, uh, they are that, and and the people did love them, and still do love them. Okay. Uh, we we still go up there, and they come down to our Swanee River Jubilee, and we great grown little bit. We watched them go from little boys to, uh, <laughs> to mature folks now. Mature people, yeah. I think we're going to be real happy with that word maturing today, okay? That's <laughs> a good word. I like it. <laughs> well, here they are singing their big song, Jesus is Coming Soon. Trouble sometimes are here Filling men's hearts with fear Freedom we all hold dear Now is that stay Humbling your heart Chasing rod, seek the way pilgrims fought, Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night, or noon. When he will be there to God, it's well run. Let's stand his soul, and the dead shall rise in the sky. Go and pray. I mean to tell you, when Archie hits a high note, I mean, he gets way, way down. He's kind of, no, he gets way, way back. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> now, some, you, you bass singers have to go down, have to go, have to go. But, but, but Archie goes back. Well, there must be a knack to it, because... <laughs> I've seen him go so far back, you'd swear he's going to fall, gonna tip over. <laughs> fall backwards. <laughs> well, they were great, and the people loved him, didn't he? Oh, yeah. You know, this next group that we got, as I said, you had everybody and his brother on there, is, uh, is a man probably loved as much as anybody in our field. Had sung tenor with the statesman probably, I think he came in 57 uh, after Denver had died. That's right. And, and was with them on and off for about 13, 14, 15 years. People love Rosie Roselle, right? He's one of a kind. <laughs> He's one of a kind. <laughs> and as is, as is true, uh, the vocal band is a good uh, test of this. So we've had a lot of different wonderful talent people come through and then they go off and do their thing. This was true with Rosie. He was with the Statesman. And then went off to do his own thing with a group called The Searchers. Yeah. Now a lot of people may not know this group because they weren't around that long, but the little bit they were around, uh, it was an exciting time when they came on stage. Oh, they, they had a lot of excitement. They sure did. And Rosie and his wife, Betty, and the and uh, I, I think the group you're going to see here, you has Jack Tony in there and uh, some other, other people. But uh, uh, they carried a B3 organ with them, which was yeah. kind, of, kind of a new sound for a yeah. group, too. And they sounded great. And the song they're going to sing is a song called My God Is There. Listen, listen to oh, them. Oh, that's good. You're going to like this.
I'll tell you what. Oh, well, Rosie knew how to get on his mule and get into town, didn't he? Uh, Rosie was a natural tenor if one ever lived. He just did what comes naturally, and uh, I, I liked it. I did too. You know what? I've said this to Rosie, and uh, and I believe it. I think when he came into gospel music is the first time I heard some what I I think what we call soul, doing a little bit extra, not really, not just what there's on the paper, but putting some extra notes in there. Just doing him, just being himself, you know. His performance of Oh, What a Savior would put chills on you anytime. Anytime it do it. <laughs> and he could take a black spiritual. You know, there, there, there are many cross crosses between the black culture and the white culture down through the years. And I think they borrowed from us and we have borrowed from them. And I, and I think Rosie understood uh, the black culture when he would sing a song like that. I think he borrowed more than a lot. I think he borrowed more. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Hey, Les, now that we're just here and, and there's just you and me, I've got to confess something to you. There was another reason I used to get up every morning and watch a gospel. I knew there must be some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if indeed somebody had sung uh, one of the songs that Gloria and I had written. <laughs> oh, you, you're kidding, boy. Because <laughs> there were a lot of Gaither songs on the there gospel really singing Jubilee. Yeah, he, uh, he touched me. I don't, I don't know how More many More than any other did. writer. Well, you're, 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 you're very kind. <laughs> and one of the groups that would sing a lot of her songs, and this happened because George and Glenn, we, we act like George and Glenn has the same last names, George Yance, Glenn Payne of the <laughs> yeah. Cathedral Quartet. Back in the early days, did not have it easy. There were a lot of struggling days for them. Yes, uh, uh, not long ago, uh, uh, we were talking about that, mm -hmm. and Glenn was uh, reminiscing about some old days. And they feel very fortunate that in in the last part of their career has been their biggest part of their career, by far. But but they they deserve it. <laughs> they they certainly do deserve it. And I and I think for young artists who think things happen overnight, they just need to understand. It doesn't happen that way at all. It it it, it really yeah. doesn't. And these two two guys have just stayed in there with a lot of different changes in personnel from time to time. But they sang this song, Thanks to Calvary. It's a song, to be honest with you, we had written after we'd heard Doug talk about his conversion experience, mm -hmm. about going back to the house where he used to live and yeah. saying, you know, thank God we don't live there anymore. Some of the places where he used to go said, thank God I don't go there anymore. Yeah, so many people can relate to that. I think everyone who's had a a past they're not so proud of, and then they accept Christ. I, that the song says it well, and George sings it well. He can sing this song. <laughs> yes, he can. Listen as he sings, "Thanks to Calvary, I don't live here anymore." Today I went back to the place where I used to go. Today. I saw that same old crowd I knew before When they asked me what had happened I tried to tell Tears ran down my face. I tried to tell them thanks to Calvary. I don't come here anymore. anymore. Then we went back to the house where I. I said, son, oh, little boy, don't you be afraid because you've got a brand new daddy now. Thanks to Calvary, we don't live here 
can sing that song. <laughs> yeah, really can. It's a good song and good singing. You know, it's one thing for a writer to write a song, but boy, to find somebody who can communicate it and take it to the world. And oh, yeah. And George certainly does it. You know, the interesting thing, listening to, listening to that group, George and Glenn have been there from the beginning. They've had a lot of different other people and great talent. Oh, yeah. And sure. the other two parts, but the sound has always been the same, hasn't it? Yeah, we were the old timers. Um, uh, you know, I'm getting almost old. And, well, I guess maybe we are old yeah. enough to, in a way, we're there. Yeah. Uh, over in North Carolina. And they had one of their original groups there. I don't think they'd uh, seen each other in yeah. no telling how many years. And it was amazing to hear them sing. Went up and sang and knocked out of the ballpark. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's also interesting. Did you did you get uh, George's catch at George's tie there? I try not to look. At George's <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun looking at these styles, isn't it? Well, they change, don't they? <laughs> they really do change. Uh, some of us just stay with the old style. Just keep going. <laughs> you know what? Stuart Hammond's song does come in their plate. The things of earth will dim and lose their value. Ties right. will come and go, won't they? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But that was an interesting time. Yeah, it, it, it really was. We've got a song coming up now by a young man by the name of uh, Kenny Henson. No, and now, did Kenny, no, Ronnie wrote it, right? I always get the two brothers confused. Ronnie wrote the song. Ronnie is a great writer. Kenny performs it. And Kenny. And I mean, and, he really performs it. And he really <laughs> sings this song. And this is probably one of their best known songs, right? Well, it was the first one that got uh, recognition. I would prefer to think that uh, another one that uh, Ronnie wrote would maybe be better, and that's when he was on the cross, I was on his mind, but I may be able That's to not bad either. <laughs> <laughs> I had forgotten. He, w he did write that one, didn't he? Well, he and another guy, they co-wrote it, uh, uh, Payne. Well, at any rate, he's a great, great writer, and this is his brother Ronnie singing this wonderful song. When he was song. very young. Yeah. Lighthouse, listen. There's a lighthouse on the hillside That overlooks life's sea When I'm tossed, it sends out a light That I might see And the light that shines in darkness Now will safely so if it wasn't for the lighthouse my ship would be no more everybody that lives around us says tear that old lighthouse down the big ships they don't sail by this way anymore Ain't no use, it's standing round But then my mind goes back to that stormy night When just in time I seen the light Yes, the light From that old lighthouse That stands up there on here. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. For Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, He has shown. Thank you. 
great is the Lord. Uh, it, 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 you know, it, it, that's always a good moment when they all sing together, isn't it? That was a fun time, and also it was a, a highlight of the program, as I recall. We got numerous uh, letters requesting the, the choir numbers, and uh, it, it, it was just a fun thing. It's good, close to what you do on the, some of the homecoming the videos, things. Yeah. You, know. you know, it's interesting. On the homecoming videos, the people have people have said we like the times when everybody is yeah. singing, sing, mm -hmm. singing together. That's interesting. That's kind of gone full cycle. We all started singing the singing conventions, you know, with a well, big group. Right. It's, it's a good sound. It's a, a lot good, of fun. That's a good sound. The Oak Ridge Boys, the first time I heard of the Oak Ridge, and I think I about told you the whole personality, your young man, Glenn Allred, was playing guitar for Wally Fowler yeah. in the Oak Ridge. I think Bob Weber was on bass. That's true. Pat Patterson was in the group. Mm -hmm. Wally sang with the group, but I think they also had another lead singer besides Wally in the group. Johnny knew. Uh, yeah, they did have another lead singer, mm -hmm. but I can't remember his and name. And Bobby Whitfield on Played the piano. piano. That's yeah. not a bad memory, right? That's pretty good. Gloria says, and why can't you remember, remember my birthday? <laughs> <laughs> I can remember who's, who had sung with whom. I've heard that uh, uh, mature people uh, <laughs> can remember the past better than they can the present. Well, that was the first Oak Ridge back in the early 50s. And in the late 50s, Herman Harper came along, yeah. or, or at least in the middle of the 50s. And um, Smitty Gatlin, a great lead singer, mm -hmm. who who died early early in life, was a yes, wonderful guy. Yeah. And then Willie Wynn was with the group for a long time. Yeah. And Willie was uh, Willie is in the present group that we're going to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Dwayne Allen is in the group. We got to see Dwayne Allen in, in the group came along in the early Bill 60s. Golden and Bill Golden and Tommy Fairchild oh, yeah. on the piano. And this is a great song, and this is a rare rare treat. Here here are the Oak Ridge Boys. Singing, Welcome Home, My Child. That's a good one. That's just like I remember that group. Brings back old times. All, all this is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Wynn had a lot of friends, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Willie Wynn was, Little was Willie. my friend. I <laughs> like Willie. A very congenial fellow. Everybody liked Willie. Of course, one of the great groups, uh, Hovey Lister and the Statesman. This was after Jake had left him and Jack Tony had come with him. This is a song where Rosie and Hovey really get down. <laughs> they can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Live like Jesus. Listen to it. There was a man born 1900 years ago where they laid down the pattern just for you and me. But now he's gone away to prepare a resting place. That's why you gotta live like Jesus every day. Oh, you gotta walk like Jesus. Oh, you gotta sing like Jesus. 
shout that Jesus. He's got a moan that Jesus. 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 Jesus.
very, very special. Very special. And uh, I, I enjoy hearing old Rex sing. So the beautiful thing about Rex is that uh, he doesn't have to be out front. I mean, he just does his thing. And, and, he, cut, he fills up the bass section real well. <laughs> very, very, very well. What a, what, it's really been good to get to know him during this uh, taping of this uh, series of tapes. You know, well, A lot of people think that Rex is very, very quiet, whereas he is, uh, but um, he's also a great jokester. He, he's an he honorary character. Oh, he is just <laughs> honorary, yeah. <laughs> Well, you've been around this, uh -huh. uh, the board, and you, you've seen how he acts with, uh, with Brock Spear, for instance. Yeah. Say he gives him a fit. <laughs> He's always kidding me on the vocal band. He says, Bill, that's not you singing the bass. Says, no, it's me. He says, they've got one of those little machines that are turning a knob. I said, trust me, Rex. That he still won't believe it's me. <laughs> on John the Revelator, he says, you're not singing that bass part. <laughs> well, it, 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 I've thought of that myself. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he sees me in a crowd now, he'll go, just turning that down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is more fun because this is like a who's who. Oh, yes, music it really have, is. To have all these people. And now we got the Spears coming up. Oh. <laughs> and you know, after Dad and Mom Spear died, Brock, Brock has told me this, they, they were working so hard to try to find identity because they lost so much yeah. when they lost Dad and Mom. And I can remember the time that I called him and said, I think I got a song for you. And I went to Nashville in his living room with an old upright piano that was kind of out of tune. Mm -hmm. And I started playing for him, the marketplace is empty, no more traffic in the streets. We worked out a little arrangement there around that piano. And they took that song and started and singing it. Came right directly to the gospel singing jubilee and put it on probably the next day. I <laughs> think they did, I think they did. <laughs> And you know what? He would call me on the road and said, Bill, we have sung songs before, but I don't think we've had anything to start a fire like this, you know, like this song is there. You know, I think that song may have set a trend with them. They, they seem to always have uh, or try to have a production type number is what I call that uh, on all of their later albums. Mm -hmm. But this was the first one. Well, as I said, they could always sing it and listen to him sing it here now. <laughs> the King is coming. The marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the street. All the builders' tools are silent. No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labor. And in the courtroom, no debate, work on earth has been suspended as the king comes through the gate. And happy faces line the hallways, those whose lives have been redeemed, broken hearts that he has mended those from prison he has freed and little children and the aged hand in hand stand over those who were crippled broken Oh, 
Tommy does a wonderful job on that. Les. Yeah, Tommy sang with us at the uh, Old Timers, <laughs> Glenn. In Greenville. Glenn and I, and Billy Todd, and uh, Tommy Atwood. And, uh, 
we had a great time. Mm -hmm. Tommy sings better than, uh, as well as he ever did. You, st you still look the same? I think he looks a little better. <laughs> He's got that curly hair? Is that, is that no, curly? I, I was kidding about <laughs> that, Tommy. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's looking good. Looks, really? looks very good. Yeah. Well, they do a great job on that. J.D. Sumner has been a character for a long, long time. And uh, always will and be. All, and always will be. There's only one J.D. <laughs> <laughs> After he left the Blackwoods, he uh, organized the Stamps Quartet. And, and uh, he, he's got a good one now and, uh, and has had all down through the years. They continue to roll along. That's the name of the song. Well, yeah, but you know, it, I think I'm right on this. The piano player, the one he used to call Tarzan. Tarzan, yeah. Tony <laughs> Brown. Tony Brown's one of the biggest producers in Nashville, Tennessee Nashville. today. Or, uh, or in the United States, for that matter. J.D. could always recognize good talent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and he had a bunch of talented people in this group. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, the Stamps Quartet, singing Rolling Along. Flesh is but a 
One sure thing you're always going to get when you meet a writer is, you want to hear my newest song. Oh yeah. I suppose Rusty Goodman was the best of that. He always had a guitar, and he said, "You got a second bill?" Or he'll do it acapella. Or he'll sing it acapella. <laughs> and um, and writers, good writers, admire other people's songs. And I never forget when Dottie had first written, "Sheltered in the Arms of God." I, I think of all the songs she's written, that has to be my favorite. Well, I haven't thought about it. She, she's written so many good ones, great but ones. I'll tell you one thing, that's a great thought, to be sheltered in the arms of God, and that probably is why you like it so much. Especially if you're worried about your kids and worried about a world that doesn't really care that much about your kids. And uh, there are times when Gloria and I, when we were at home with our little kids, said, I don't know what's going on out there, but at least tonight it's safe. Around here everything's okay. <laughs> Around here everything's okay. That does give you a good feeling. Yeah. The Downings was a young, and if I dare to use the word, a little bit more contemporary group. They came out of the quartets. Yes. Paul and Ann Downing have become uh, favorites on the videos. And of course, uh, Paul has passed away since the first video that he was on. He was a low down bass singer. Hey, well, he could, he could <laughs> sing the low notes, couldn't he? He really could. You were telling me about that experience when he was in Israel. Well, uh, yeah, uh, the Florida Boys and uh, the Blackwoods and the Downings and the Thresh Brothers went to Israel uh, uh, and was promoted uh, by the Israeli government for a series of programs. And I remember the first program was in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. I believe, and then Ben Hadai, I don't know how to say that. But no, sir. Uh, and Paul uh, had. Uh, requested that his group be first and I remember when he was introduced and he went on the stage and all he said was good evening <laughs> but it was good evening you know and it just rocked the room yeah. and, and and they applauded him for three or four minutes just for saying good evening. <laughs> well we lost a good friend when we lost yeah. Paul but here is when Paul was younger and the whole group was younger sheltered in the arms of God. Of hands so warm and tender They're leading me In paths that I must draw I'll have no fear For Jesus walks beside me
It's been a lot of uh, uh, fun, maybe it's not the word, but uh, just a lot of joy in looking through these tapes because you see a lot of different sides of people. You see the fun side of uh, Sam Goodman, for instance. He was always poking fun at you and having a good time. Oh, yeah. Well, I agree with you. And looking at the tapes, I saw a lot of things that I didn't remember, but I was there for every one of them, and I do know where you're coming from when you're talking about the two sides of Sam, the fun side. and and the heart side. He did have a heart as big as a house. You know, he came to see the trio and the vocal band in the last days of his life. I think about two months later he passed away. But he came up and sat on the second row and was blessed and moved by the whole thing. But it was good to, it was good to see that sensitive side. I think he knew that his, his, the end was near. He's done other things that uh, on the Jubilee that could be used at a later date if, if, if we do these things again. You know, one of the things that I saw was this beautiful little piece that he read to Cherie Tony, Jack Tony's daughter. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's, let's good. listen to it. I guess to a man and woman, the greatest thing in the world is their little kids. To a man, that boy that will someday share his name, and that young lady, that little curly-headed girl, It'll someday replace her as a mother. To me, two little boys are very dear to my heart. I have a special dedication just for them and for mom and dad. We hope that you enjoy the beauty of a child. Now, did you ever just stop and watch a little child at play? And without his knowing it, maybe hear what he'd say. 
Now, he might build a bridge or capture an entire town or maybe just pile up a little dust and then kick it down. Or did you ever just watch a little girl when she thought she was all alone? Pretend that she was all grown up and in a home of her own. How she dresses in clothes she's seen her mama use and then stumble around when she tries to walk in her high heel shoes. There's nothing, I guess, in this big, wonderful world that can warm your heart like a little boy or a little girl. Why, you love them so much that you'd be willing to die just to give them a home. Though it might be humble indeed and then see that they have all of the things in this life that they really need. Now, did you ever just look into their eyes when you went to tuck them into bed and wonder just what thoughts were in that tousled up head? Now sometimes they're rowdy and seem to stay in your way and they'll try your patience the live long day. Oh, and you get that switch and you'll have to punish them and it might be quite severe. Then you'll rush from their room where you can hide and shed a tear. But all is forgotten and they can fill your heart with bliss when they climb upon your knee and give you a little kiss and their smiles all oh, they seem to make the heavens unfold and then there's that joy that special joy unspeakable that envelops your soul so is it any wonder that in years long ago that Jesus loved the little children so so now death comes to claim one Try not to despair because, you know, your heaven just wouldn't be complete and mine wouldn't either if those little kids, they wasn't up there. God bless you. can't help get a little sentimental when you look at people who have made such beautiful art and made such a wonderful contribution in, our, in all of our lives yes. and to think that they're not here anymore. And thank God for an Albert Brumley who came along and said, there is another day, another time when all God's singers we're all going to be there.
of people have sung that song, but I suppose James <laughs> sings that about as well as anybody sings it, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, he's sung it many times. <laughs> he's thrilled many audiences with it. And uh, I, I like James because he's one of the few people that's older than I am, you know, <laughs> that's still around. <laughs> Some great singing. Les, this has been a delight for me to sit here and reminisce with you. It's, it's uh, consuming, isn't it? <laughs> it? It just really is. It's a little, yeah. it's a little overwhelming, yes. really, really, in a way. Well, it's been good, and uh, you always went off the air with, we'll meet you in that happy jubilee, okay? All right. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> Happy!